Art students, Brian Proctor back again with a new drawing lesson, and this one is a completely new drawing lesson. Now, I've been trying to figure out how to teach you guys to make your art become a lot better, a lot quicker, and I think I finally figured it out. So I'm going to keep this opening short because I have a long intro on explaining how I plan on doing that and what I'm going to do in the whole nine yards. So you can always skip the intro and go into the uh, the drawing right away but it is a long intro and it explains why and how i'm going to do it so i'll keep this opening short and we can jump right into the video so enjoy it guarantee you're going to learn something on this one so tell your friends keep coming back the more you come back the more you will learn so let's go for it all right so let's start out with what you see in front of you this is a guy that's falling from the sky Okay, so I put the rubble and stuff around because to give him that extra falling position. Now, what this is, I want to start something new because you know I have the, if you if you've been with me for a while, you know I have the action pose position of the week uh, series that I've been doing. But I've been thinking about it, and um, it's time to kick it up a notch. It's time to get you guys to really really start drawing. So what I plan on starting to do what I plan on starting to do what I am going to do what I'm doing is this and I'm trying to explain this as I'm talking because I'm at the end of my sentence before I finish it um, the action pose positions that I've been doing are good because you can see that and you can draw that but what if you don't need that I mean I want you to be able to draw one but what if you don't need that position what if you need a position that's close to that so, and I don't want you just drawing what you see because then you have the ability to just draw what you see, but you can't draw anything else in other, other than what you see. So what I'm going to start doing is drawing these positions. And I want to get more into like more twists and turns and um, foreshortening because I haven't really gotten into that. And that's the exciting part about doing comics when you can do a lot of foreshortening and twisting. You just don't want your character standing straight stagnant all the time so what I'm going to start doing is positions with a lot more twists and draw or show you how to draw not this exact position but show you how to get to a position that's really close to that so this guy is falling so I'm going to show you how to get to a falling position and maybe shift it over a couple times so you will know the steps to get to that so that when you draw a position you might want somebody to be falling out of a plane like this guy and um, but you might not want this side you might, you might want the other side or you might want from the back where you see straight through his legs or you might want to see the top of his head and his legs are at the bottom so the goal here is to start drawing these positions to show you how to get to a position either close to this or similar to that if you understand what I'm saying so this when I did this I ended up drawing a face on this guy and I didn't have the stripes in the clothes and it just looked like a naked person falling and with YouTube tripping I didn't want that so I put these stripes on him these little uh, to, to give him a little suit to make it look like he's in a, a pilot so I put a little rubble coming down maybe um, like he was flying something and he got shot and it blew up and he was thrown from his plane so that's why I did this I'm not trying to this is not a character of mine and I'm not trying to copy anybody's character so if it resembles your character I'm sorry I wasn't trying I didn't see your character I wasn't trying to steal your idea and that's one of the reasons why I don't put faces on my drawings because one I don't want to infringe on somebody's um, idea and two, I don't want it to look like a naked man flying around somewhere or jumping around somewhere. That's why I, and I'm grabbing this piece of paper real quick, that's why I do stuff like this. Because it just it's just anatomy without having to have a story with it. But when you put a face on it, then it kind of gets personal and you're like, okay, well, who is that guy and why is this and what is that? So I won't be drawing any more faces. So this one was the first one, and as I said... I messed up and I drew that face and then it looked like he was just naked so then I put the actual stripes on it to give him a skin tight suit so with all that out of the way sharpen your pencils because as I said this is going to be a new series and I'm going to start showing you guys 
how to do more in one video so that you can start doing your books or you can start doing your own different fresh action poses. So with that mouthful out the way, let's get the drawing. All right, so here you have this guy that's falling or you have somebody that's falling or he could be tossed up into the air. He could be, he could have be sinking into the water. Anything with that going down type of motion. Now, if I flip this up, he could be getting thrown up or somebody could have punched him and he could be going up. So that's a good way to do a double, uh, double shot, double take, double something easily. So with somebody falling, if you're falling, usually you want to, you're going to have yourself bending up like that because the, the force of the air is pushing up. The heaviest part is going to sink down. Just like if you're, if you're fat and you lay on a real soft mattress, your belly is going to go down where your head is going to be up here and your feet are going to be up there like that. So you want to remember that. So there are three parts to the body, as I always say, three main parts to the body, your torso, your stomach, and your hips. So torso is always going to do this. And I'm going to go over this over and over in all my videos because I want you guys to know. I'm going to start using the ball. I used to use the tuna can, but I use the ball now. And watch some of my old videos and you'll understand that. And then the upside down house. But now we're going to change the upside down house at times to a different shape. So anything you do in foreshorten, foreshortening, if I do, and I'm trying to think because this is, this is kind of on the fly. If I do this and I do this pole piece of uh, thing and I do this cylinder, okay? Now, if, let's say I stood it up. This is sitting on the table somehow. This is like a suction and sitting on the table, all right? Now, if I turn this, let's turn it to the side because I want it to the side. Now, if I turn this this way, imagine that this is it this way. Now, if I turn this this way, it's going to take on a different shape. Now, that's going back in, um, that's for shortening. So we'll do this, do this one first, then we'll have this one. This one's going to actually come into it more. So it's going to come into it more, and you're going to see more of that roundness right here. And this, because this is so wide, it's going to be probably about out here. And that also depends on how much you turn this thing. It determines how um, how much of this is going to cover because if I turned it more it would look like this you'd have more base or this foot this base you wouldn't see any of this piece right here and then you'd see that now that's the same thing because uh, before I go to that next sentence if you were if you if it was see-through if it was clear and plastic or something if it was see-through it would be like this you'd see like that and then there's the rest of that ball right there. So if I ink part of it, if I can find a good ink pen, that's 05. And this would be the part that you would see. And this would be the part that you wouldn't see. It all depends on how you turn or how you shift that object. Same thing with the body. So if you have this, the torso, the del, uh, the, the stomach, and the hips. If you turn that, if you lifted that up, if you turn it, you lifted it up, you would be more the same thing. It'd be like this. You'd have this ball right here, which is your stomach, and then you'd have your your um, hips like that. And that still would be an upside down house, but you would start to round it off because you'd have that centerpiece, which would cut off both your legs. Like so. You gotta remember, you have to have room for the man junk. If it's a woman, you would have to have room for the lady junk. And keep it round. Always remember, you thinking cylinders, ovals, and um, cylinders and ovals to keep it round. I was going to say triangles, but triangles are not round. Center line, chest. That same thing, you, your delts, your your bicep, 
and your forearm would come down like that. And because it's going back in perspective, like this would be the front of it and this would be the back going way back like that. If you did, if you keep coming down, you would have to have your legs bigger like that. Most times, unless the person's on glass, you end up cutting it because your camera angle, you want your camera angle to be somewhere in here, it makes it look better. Versus trying to go way down in and draw the feet. Unless he was on glass or he was just hovering above you, you know, like he was just like um, this giant robot hovering above you, then you might want to see the bottom of the feet or if you wanted to show that this guy has got jets in his feet and he's, the jets are firing and that's why he's hovering above you. But other than that, you have to remember the pieces and how they look when they tilt. So, going back to the body. And this is what I want to do in this series. I want to continue to break stuff down. So these are going to be pretty long, but I want to keep them, I definitely want to keep them under an hour. I want to try to keep it under about 30 minutes. So I don't want to go off too far, but I want to continue to show you about um, foreshortening and twisting and so forth. So with this guy, like I say, I'm not going to exactly draw, exactly draw this picture, but I want to show you how to get towards that picture. So starting out, starting out with the torso, and I want to zoom the camera back, but I don't want it to, I want you to see the picture, but I want you, I don't want my camera to mess up because it tends to do that. So your torso, center line. And I'm going to move it over a little bit. I'm not going to have it so sideways, sideways as in here's your torso, here's your stomach, here's the uh, hips, here's the one leg, here's the other leg, and it's just sideways. I'm going to bring it more into foreshortening. So you have that torso. You know how to do the torso like that. Remember this thing is round. It's round. It's always round. The chest is going to round up here. You want to do your stomach which is going to be a ball. We're going to use a ball from now on because it's just easier. And then the same thing. We're going to take this and we're going to bring this up into that ball the same way we, we foreshortened this thing. By tilting it, you bring it inside of that. So we're going to bring this, this, this hip here inside this ball. And for the time being, let's do more of an oval. Get, get my center line going and then of course you know you have your hole for your legs and you have your hole for your other leg here so that's where that little house shape would come in like this being a hole you have your stomach your torso you know you have your hole here for your um, arm so then you put your legs. Now you don't, you might not want your legs the same way this guy is. And let me let me. Do I want to ink this yet? I don't want to ink this quite yet. And remembering this is going to curve up here. You're still going to have that small arch in your back. That's that's kind of a given unless you bring these hips these hips all the way up. And I'll do a small one here. So you have this. You have that that ball for the stomach. And then if you bring these hips all the way up like that, <clears throat> like that, to have that curve, and then you're going to have that, um, that bend in that stomach. Like if you have a flat piece of paper and you bend it, you're going to have that little crease right in here and in here. And then the legs will come up here, which are just cylinders, and then here. However you decide to put the arms and legs. See, that, that's the part that's on you. As I said, you might not want this exact position, but you want to draw somebody falling. So these are the steps that you're taking. So always have that center line because when you lose that center line, you, you kind of you kind of dead in the water. The buttocks, you have that bend, you have that bend and a crease. And you're gonna have try not to make your oval too big. Try not to make the oval too big. And I'm drawing to the side. I need to stay in the center. So here is that leg, drawing that cylinder. And when I rush, when I rush, I go fast. I'm trying not to rush or go fast. Here's that other cylinder. However you want that leg. 
But this is the crucial part that I'm trying to show you guys. And then, of course, you have your arm. You might want the arm down, one part of the arm down. You might want one part of the arm up. You might want the whole arm coming up like a, a quick fall. You might want the arm bent like that, like he's trying to maneuver himself to flip over or something. And then the head. You might see some neck. It depends on the angle of descent. The angle of descent. Good one, Brian. So, and this is not what I was going to show you. I was going to show you this one. But I'm going to ink this one real quick because, as I said, you might not need that one position, but you might want something a little harder. So, because of the slope, like that, you have that, which tells people that it's coming up or falling down. You have the separation. This leg here. And once you know the pieces of the puzzle, as I always say, it's, it's really easy to put this stuff together. Bottom of your foot, you have your chest here, it goes up to your arms. And I'm not really gonna draw a lot of muscles on these. I'm just, I just want you, want you guys to, to know the shape. This is the, the um, it's at the bottom of the mountain on the rib cage, and this is where your stomach is gonna be. So you have your abs there chest, the head, and however you want to do your hands. Something else I want to start doing, open hands. I've been doing a lot of fists. So I want to start doing open hands so you guys can understand how to do open hands. So, easy peasy, fresh and greasy. Bring that up a little bit more. And then you have a position of falling. Now, let's get back into this. Because it's not sloped, this one, this back is not sloped as much as that back, but now you know how to do it. So, get my pencil. You have this, your upside down house. Your, your hips are right here, your stomach is right here. This is your bottom of the mountain for the rib cage, which goes up like that. And you see some neck and some head. Now this guy I did, I put him kind of unconscious. So, I was going to put the head back, I was going to put the head forward, I, was going, I wasn't going to put a face on him, realistically, but I made him unconscious, so when, you, when you're unconscious, you're, you won't have clenched hands or clenched fists, you kind of have a relaxed hand, so depending on what you need, and this is what this is about, depending on what you need, so let's just put this arm down just because, I'm going to put that arm down, and I'll put this arm up, part of the arm, not this arm, same thing with this one. This one's going to go down, it's, it's foreshortened, and this one's going to come up like that. And usually when you start doing these, in the beginning you make them straight, but then you kind of give a little, put a little bend to it. Because the arm, you can't see that, the arm has a bend to it, just like this. It comes up and it bends a little bit. So start doing a little bit of bend in your arm. So it's going to be like that. Even if you just do a slight bend, even with the bicep, just a slight bend, that gives you that gives your drawing a little more motion to it. So we're gonna have this, this back. It goes into the, the small of the back and then the hips. So this other arm comes down here and it curves up like that. Remember to put a little curve and let's just open his hand like that. And his hand is going off the page, but that's okay. So he's falling. If I put the head back, say part of the neck, you see underneath the chin, and put the head back, just because I can, I don't know if I wanna keep that head back like that. And then you have this leg, let's put this leg up here. And I know I'm drawing through this other guy, which is bad, I shouldn't have inked it. And then foreshortening for this leg here. Hmm. I don't want him to be like he's just laying there getting an examination prostate exam. So let's put this leg out. See, which is not foreshortening, but I'm gonna try to foreshorten this leg somehow. And I'll do another quick one just because. And when you see the bottom of the foot, that tells you it tells you you're looking up to a degree, or that foot is actually turned to you where you're looking up at it. So this other leg would be 
Let's bring it up. Let's bring that leg up here. And then that there. So what I just did on this one was I took his leg, this is his, this is his hips right here. So I took this part of the leg, which is this first piece right here, and I lifted it up like that. So your knee is right here. If, 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 I, if, if he was going straight up, the leg would come up like this, and his foot would be here. So what I want to do is I'm going to bend the other leg, the other part, probably down like this. Like that. So you have your knee, you have your calf, your um, ankles, and the foot is like that, accompanied behind the other foot. The other leg, the other part of the leg. So we're going to have the knee here. And that's kind of a strange falling position but this part is what counts so i'm gonna do this here's the other part of the leg coming around here and there to form the buttocks this is the man jump this is the other part of the, the this is the other buttock buttock or would it be buttocks if it's just one and then the other leg is here now i can bend it down but this leg is bent down here so just for the sake of argument i'm going to straighten that leg out and then bring that foot up. We have the chest going up into the delt. Arm comes out from behind the delt. We have that. And then the small of the back there. Neck and the face. The other part of the arm, the delt will be right here. The bicep will stop right there. And then the forearm about right there. So let's let's just open that hand up. You have your smallest part of the palm, you have the other part of the palm, and look at my hand video. You have two pieces to the thumb, and then you have your fingers. Let's just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is bent down like that one, just like the other picture. This one is bent up. This one is bent down a little bit more, and this one is more straighter. And that's a weird hand position, but you'd have to do your own. Hold your hand in the mirror or take pictures of it and see what would it be. If I was, my hand was relaxed, it would be like that. It kind of closes anyway. Nobody is asleep with their hand like this. Just, just let your hand relax and then see the shape that your fingers take. You're always going to take that. It's going to always be that curved thing, just like on the inside. It's going to have that curve. It's like steps going up the steps. So as I say, this, this hand is not visible unless I make it visible. And then again, you have that small part of the palm going to that pinky. You have that second finger, third finger, and fourth finger. And this is a jacked up hand. I'm just showing you guys. And then this foot. This foot would be, it wouldn't be pointed out. If he was, if he was actually falling, or laying on the water or just impacted, just impacted the ground. The foot would be kind of like turned to the side. This is the toe. This is the top of it. This is the back heel. Like that. It would hit, if you just hit the ground, like, just like, pow, like that. I mean, just the split second hit the, this, where this leg hadn't even hit the ground yet. The foot would be twisted in like that. Actually, why did I curve that like that? Like so. All right, now let's get another sheet and do just another slight variation of that angle or two. Having your torso, having your abs, and then having your hips. And let's, let's twist the hips over a little bit. So this is going this way, this is this way, and this is this way. So we're going to have, this is your upside down house, this is one leg, this is the other leg. So this leg is going to be up, like that. This leg is going to be out, like that. Uh, if he was falling, let's put that chest back a little bit more. Put this leg down here, 
put this leg up a little bit higher. Depends on if his leg, if his head is up, it's like he woke up and say, huh, who's there? Who's bugging me? He would lift it up. But usually if you're falling with your chest back this far, you probably just see part of the chin, maybe a little top of the head, maybe not even that. So we're going to twist this arm up and over, and maybe this one will go down and out like that. So this leg is in the way of this arm. But I do like that position, and let's just do this. Let's foreshorten this leg to about right here. And then there's the foot. So this guy is actually truly falling. He could have slipped on ice and just did one of those alley-oop kind of falls. You're going to have that split right there for the bucks. You're going to have this piece here. I'm going to one whole piece for, for the uh, crotch and that. So abs would be here, chest would be here. Remember that that when you when you when you raise your arms, your I was going to grab an old old um, example. When you raise your arms, your collarbone. This is your collarbone. Your collarbone goes up with that arm. So anytime you raise your arms, your collarbone is going to go up like this, and then there's your delt, and your arms tuck in beneath the delt. So just remember that. Even laying down, you'll see that delt right here. And I really like this arm. The way this arm, instead of having this arm come up like this, let's bring it out a little bit more. So this is a chest. The delt would be here. So let's bring this out and then up like that. Since I have this twisted, we have that arm at that same angle. So starting from the bottom, let's do the foot again. Seeing the bottom of the foot, this one, which, where did I have the leg? They had the leg right here. Bottom of the foot, piece right there. This arm goes up and out. And as I said, I'm not really going to do muscles. I'm going to do a, a uh, video on drawing shredded or ripped characters. Or basically, why not to do ripped characters right now? Not drawing a video right now, but... That might be the title. Why, why not to draw rip characters at this point in time? So we have dealt arm, other arm, other arm. Forgive me when I say other arm, other part of the arm. Get that leg because that leg is right here. For shortening, bringing that leg into that uh, other leg. And see, when I say leg and other leg, you know what I'm saying. This is this part, this is the thigh, and then the thigh ends right here at the knee. So you're bringing this leg, instead of having it way out here like this, you're bringing it into that leg like that. And that's foreshortening. Foreshortening, part of foreshortening, because this is shorter. This wouldn't be all the way long. It would be a little shorter because your foot would be here. So if I did that one, here's your foot for shortening. Foot's going the other way, Brian, like that. And you have this, and then your calf. And that's for shortening. This one is a little longer, but this is why I'm doing the series, to show you guys quickly how to draw a lot better. So you can start kicking out your books, showing the world your talent. And this arm is here. You won't see any of the, the, um, the uh, lats, which is good because if you have anything covering, you don't have to draw it. And I remember Jim Lee, who it got me started drawing again, uh, used to say when he, he did, he used to like to draw capes. He would do like, if you put a cape on this guy here, he would like to have the cape coming around and blowing across the body because you could you don't have to draw that much body so if you had your head your neck yeah he's got a small neck like that so here's a cape that comes up and around the neck and this one's like this you'd have the other one come and it would blow across the body like that so he didn't have to draw all of this he just draw part of this leg 
and which is a smart thing. So yeah, that's that's good when you have something that covers something else. You don't have to draw it. You don't have to draw those lats or how they connect to the waist. Really, really simple. Chest, neck, and then the chin. And so you might see part of that head. So turning it the other way around, and this is the book that I'm doing. I'm doing a 360 book, an action pose position 360, where you basically I have one pose and I show you what it looks like from different angles because as I say you might not want this particular angle but you might want uh, something similar to that from a different angle so yeah so you have two three you have that first one you have this one this one and then this one and then just one more for the sake of time you have the torso here you have the stomach here and we're going from the head here's the head stomach and then you have the house upside down house and it's, again it's going to be curved like that falling down you have your place for the arm place for the arm you have one leg up here coming back the other leg let's just do this this is more of a drop this is, this is a, a far fall when you're falling a long way you have time your your appendages will have time to spread out like that when you do a quick fall, everything is usually close together. That, that's more of a faster, quicker fall. Like that. Your arms will be straight up, pretty much straight up. Like that. So, the hard part is just this. It's just one circle, the other circle, which is your stomach, and then your upside down house. Remembering your center line, like that. And so keeping that curve, so this hip would be right here. This side of the, your hip would be right there, it's in a line there, and that gives you that curve. And then, since it's curving, if you put your head here, like um, your neck is pushing up because the air is pushing up on your head, so it's pushing your head into your, it's pushing your chin into your chest. That's what I was trying to say. Then you have that curve, that whole curve thing. So let my hands here, and I don't want to have my hands straight up, but just give it a little bit of outer 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 motion outer just because like that and see that's a straight drop so let's do this you have your head with your chin hitting your chest I turn this upside down this is my chest this is my collar collarbone this is my delt this is my bicep form you won't see much of that. You probably see a little bit of the shoulder, the um, delt, and that, and then your hand is open. Your, your spine it separates the back, so you have that little lump right there. So what if this is this? This is your chest. This is your abs here, and it goes into that. So that first set, you might see a bit of that second set. If you're trying to draw muscular, muscular, you won't see the rest of that. And then this comes into your hips. And then your foot. And this hand is gonna be twisted to the side because I say this is a this is a quick this is a quick drop. This is like from the roof to the ground. You just you fall straight down, but as you fall like if you're falling a mile the, the wind will hit your back and it will spread your legs and it. it's kind of like a, a dropping a cloth if a cloth has a long time to, to open a long time to fall it will open and kind of float down but somebody is heavy something as heavy as a person it would take a long time before his arms and legs kind of open up just look at a skydiver skydivers they have their arms and legs open because of the air is hitting it. They're, they can straighten themselves out when they want to go into a, like a power dive. And this is what this is kind of like a power fall. No control. So the thumb is going to be here. The finger is going to be here, 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 and here. So hopefully with this quick lesson, you got something. As I said, I'm going to try to keep these under 30 minutes. Definitely under an hour, around about 30 minutes. So one last recap. Just as long as you have your torso, somehow, torso, get that center line. You know where that, you have that, that mountain or that rib, the end of the ribs, the rib cage. 
put that ball in here somewhere. The ball actually goes inside. I'm gonna go inside that rib cage. And then where you place the hips, that is the part that determines the amount of turn on the body. So I'm using blue. So if I put the hips, remember, it's, 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 it can be a, a hard fall. A long fall is gonna be, you're gonna have that. But if it's, you can, if it's like a flying kind of, skydiving kind of fall, you'll have that center of your back, that small of your back right there. And then if you put the, put the, your hips here, or wherever you decide to put your hips, remembering you split it, have two holes for your legs, and then you're good to go. You can put that leg here, put that leg up, however, you could be swimming and kicking, whatever, and then you don't want to have this too wide. You want to kind of narrow that out because your hand, your arms, you're going to have a hole for your arms, and you don't want that too far up. You don't want that chest to be too big. And then you put your arms however you want to put your arms here, there, there, same way with the other side. And it depends. If he's looking down, the neck will come up, and if he's looking kind of over his, his chest, then you would have something like this. But if he's unconscious or he's falling, that head is definitely going to go back back there somewhere so my camera's blurring because it just likes to do that after 30 minutes so i will end this video here and hopefully you guys got something let me know uh some positions that you guys are working on and you want to do some different positions like you might have seen um this like this is the old this is the old um this is from the last video uh position a position like that and you say oh i like that position brian but can you do that position and show me some other variations and then I'll, I'll do that. But just leave a comment. And um, for all you subscribers, if you guys are on social media, any type of social media, YouTube, YouTube, because you're on YouTube, because you're looking at this, Facebook, um, Twitter, whatever, please. And you know, and you're an artist and you know artist friends, even if you don't know artist friends, tell them about my channel. Leave a link to my channel so we can get some one, I can get some more subscribers, and two, we can get the world to draw a little bit better, faster, and easier. So, back to my original, the falling guy. And this, and this. So, there we go. That's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Give a thumbs up. As I say, leave a comment and tell others about my channel. All right, see you guys later. I am out.